Okay, so my name is Carl Cummins, and I'm an applied mathematician. And I'm going to answer a question that you've had in a pub. Why do I have to wait two minutes for my pint of Guinness? So, what you see here is the anatomy and the lifetime of a pint of Guinness. Observed a creamy head, which is just bubbles of nitrogen gas, and a tulip-shaped glass. Now, the lifetime of a pint of Guinness is in some respects like a human lifetime. Like people, the pint is born, settles down, but eventually is no more. Now, I want to draw your attention to the pint's early life, because like with people, that's where all the fun happens. If you look closely enough under the high-speed camera, you can observe these Guinness bubbles sinking along the sides of the glass. But bubbles are like balls of air. They're supposed to go up according to Archimedes' principle. And if they're going down in Guinness, why don't they get down in Heineken or Budweiser? This paradox of sinking bubbles has puzzled scientists since the pouring of the very first pint, but my research provides the answer. First, let's look at a pint of Guinness in a bit more detail. Well, Guinness uses nitrogen bubbles, not carbon dioxide bubbles, for its head. And this is important. It's important because of the rel relative sizes. Here, I showed a relative size of a nitrogen bubble compared with a carbon dioxide bubble. I want you to imagine this. Try, imagine a beach ball of this size and a beach ball of this size. And you try to sink it into a pool of water, which is more difficult to sink. What I'm saying here is that nitrogen isn't as buoyant as carbon dioxide. Now, this is one of the pieces of the puzzle, but it's not the whole story. If you remember, the Guinness glass has a very particular shape. Most importantly, it's wider at its mouth than it is at its base. It turns out it plays a crucial role in causing Guinness bubbles to sink. In order to show this, I represent a pint of Guinness as a set of mathematical equations, and then I use a powerful computer to solve them. So why do they sink? Well, it turns out Archimedes was right. Guinness bubbles do want to go up. But as they go up, they drag liquid with them. And because this liquid doesn't shoot out the top of the glass, it falls down the sides because of the glass's particular shape. And this is where the two pieces of the puzzle come together. As this Guinness liquid is gushing down the sides of the glass, the nitrogen bubbles aren't buoyant enough to fight the current and get dragged down with it. What you see here is a pint of Guinness settling in a regular pint glass and an upside down or anti-pint glass, which is probably the way most pint glasses end up anyway. Now, although I set out to solve the sinking bubble paradox, the types of equations that I solved here are precisely those that we carried out in some industrial mixing plant. What I've therefore solved is a much more general two-phase flow problem known in the biological sciences as the boycott effect. What we have now is a solid theoretical underpinning for this phenomenon. And we have a way to optimize and predict settling times from the humble pint or the humble anti-pint all the way up to, say, the giant sedimentation vats of a pharmaceutical company. Thank you.